Hi guys, and thanks for watching. Did you know the world's largest supplier of batteries is CATL? Now, CATL is a Chinese battery manufacturer who has supply contracts with Mercedes, Neo, and Tesla. They know how to do it and they do it very well. Now, CATL has just announced that they will launch a sodium iron battery in July of this year. Now, if you're watching this video sometime in the future, I'm talking about July of 2021. So it's happening soon. Now, what is a sodium iron battery exactly and why are they launching it? Well, that is a very good question. So what's happened? CATL will launch EV batteries made of sodium iron around July. The company's founder and chairman, Robin Zeng, said at the company's shareholder meeting recently. Well, actually, about a week ago. Now, with the innovation that would come with sodium iron battery cell technology, the cost of batteries will also likely go up of this particular technology. The sodium iron battery CATL is planning to produce could roll out from its 21C Innovation Lab in Ningdi, Fujian province, which the company built in 2020 to focus on R&D of next generation batteries. Now, why is it important? Lithium ion batteries, which are used predominantly in EVs, have lithium as the electrode material. Lithium, though, conferring high energy distribution is handicapped due to limited availability, high costs, and environmental hazards involved in mining of this metal. Relative to lithium, sodium is extremely widely available, costs almost nothing, but compares unfavorably from the perspective of performance and energy density. Research is underway to improve the performance of sodium ion batteries. Now, guys, remember, Lithium iron phosphate used to be written off entirely as a battery that could be used in vehicles, in cars or trucks or buses. However, energy density in the latest lithium iron phosphate batteries has significantly improved. Cost has continued to decline, and now it is considered a very viable battery proposition. Obviously, if it was not, Tesla wouldn't be using it, neither would Neo. Clearly, Tesla and Neo sure as hell know what they're doing and have chosen to use it in some of their models. So guys, sodium ion batteries are called NIBs for short. So when I say NIBs, I'm referring to sodium ion batteries. They have the potential to revolutionize grid energy storage and indirectly help EVs in a big way. Now, I'm gonna show you how. Recently, CATL announced the battery, of course, in July, but they didn't say much about that battery, what it would do, what its advantages were, what it was for, etc., etc. What they did tell us is that the batteries in the short term will be temporarily more expensive. However, in the long term, they'll be much cheaper and I'll show you why. With efficient mass production, NIBs will be considerably cheaper, around about 30% less in the long term than lithium ion batteries or LIBs. The main advantage of sodium ion batteries is their use of abundant, cheap and benign material. Min Ah Lee, a postdoctoral research fellow at Stanford University reports. The material costs are $30 a kilo for NMC and $10 a kilo for our sodium salt. So the cost per kilowatt hour for NMC in the lithium cell is around $48 a kilowatt hour and for our material in the sodium cell is around $35 per kilowatt hour. With further development of a better anode having a lower operating potential in the future, decreased by $20 per kilowatt hour with an increase in full cell energy density. We are expecting the wholesale price or cost for mass production of our cathode material to be even cheaper than $10 a kilo, as it is originated from abundant biomass, for example, corn liquor. So, NIBs, or sodium batteries, have the potential of reaching a cost per kilowatt hour of around 40 euros, while the cheapest LOBs, lithium ion batteries, are unlikely to get much lower than 60 euros per kilowatt hour simply because of the cost of the raw material, the cost of the lithium. Makes sense, right? As it already happens with LIBs, NIBs can be optimized for energy density, power density, cost, safety, or durability. So, the same applies to both batteries. Both lithium batteries and sodium batteries can be optimized for whatever the application is. The European NAIMA project was conceived to develop and test two configurations of enhanced battery cells to satisfy the main ESS, energy storage system applications. One was optimized for power density and cycle life industrial applications, and the other was optimized for energy density and cost domestic applications such as cell phones or cars or 
all those kinds of things. Now, the first battery cell design is the most promising out of the two that they optimized. And it showed us the power density of the battery cells can be extremely high. Now, it's obvious that high power density and great cycle life combined with low cost can make NIBs perfect for energy storage solutions where energy density is not that important. In other words, these sodium batteries are perfect for grid storage or home storage, those kinds of applications where size doesn't matter. What does this do for lithium ion batteries? Well, it frees up their production for other purposes, which is exactly what the world needs right now. With NIBs or lithium ion batteries, we can not only store more renewable energy in general, but they also enable us to build powerful green charging stations for EVs. In the future, all EV charging stations will have batteries to function as buffers for peaks in production or demand or electricity from the grid. Moreover, if grid energy storage uses NIBs instead of LOBs, it will leave more lithium available to make LOBs for EVs, where energy density is really important. Obviously, we don't have enough lithium ion supply, lithium supply in the world right now to satisfy the demand we have for electric cars. It hasn't been mined. Elon Musk has talked about this. However, we have a metric shit ton of salt, of sodium, which is what we need to supply the world's energy need. The world needs battery storage, not just for cars, it needs even more battery storage for grids. Yep. When solar brings in energy during the day and wind brings in energy, we need to be able to store that energy. And the grids are going to transfer very quickly from coal and other polluting fossil fuels to solar and wind and batteries as soon as capacity of batteries is there. The reason for this, guys, and it's a fact, solar, wind and battery are much, much cheaper at around about approximately 2.5 cents per kilowatt hour versus coal at around about 6 cents per kilowatt hour. It's much cheaper. It's also much greener. Now, there was also a test on the second battery, and the second battery was made to provide higher energy density so it could be used for smaller ESS for domestic usage where space is more limited. Moreover, since NIBs are extremely safe, CTP cell to pack technology could be used to make EV batteries with a decent energy density of around 180 watts per kilogram at the pack level. I personally can't see that ever happening. I think that by the time these batteries become widespread on the market, lithium will have improved its energy density whether that's iron phosphate or not. So I believe the bar will be raised and that 180 watts per kilogram will be too low to be used for battery storage in cars, for batteries in cars. However, it doesn't matter. We need these batteries. We need a huge amount of these batteries to use for homes, for power storage, for factories, for governments, for power plants. A huge amount of these are needed. And these, these tests showed of these two different batteries that we can actually manufacture these batteries at scale. This is the important part. We can make them at scale at a cost that will significantly undercut lithium iron batteries or lithium phosphate batteries, therefore freeing up lithium iron phosphate batteries for EVs where they are most suitable and providing these batteries at a lower cost. Yep, at a lower cost long term, a far lower cost of approximately 30% for energy storage. Now guys, I really look forward to see the specs of the NIBs or the sodium batteries made by CATL. We haven't seen those yet. Will they be optimized for power or for energy density? Now guys, who will be the next company to announce the production of sodium batteries? Will it be BYD? Will it be Tesla? Who will it be? What are your thoughts? I'm intrigued to know what you think. I'm fascinated by the future. Isn't it an amazing world we live in? Truly, guys, if you have kids, really, there's never been a better time to be alive. The world is progressing to a green, renewable energy, 100% world where there will be so much potential. And one of those reasons for that potential is the fact that almost every country in the world by 2040 will have an overabundance of energy. Just imagine what we can do with a massive overabundance of energy.
Now, if you're not sure about this concept, I'm going to make another video of what's called superpower. Yep, Tony Sieber talked all about superpower, and these batteries are going to provide us with superpower. And now what that means is for 99% of the year, we will have at least 200% more energy than we need. That's correct. We, when I say we, I mean, yep, the world will have at least 200% more energy than it needs for 99% of the year. There will be extreme situations where there'll be no sun and no wind, and our energy storage needs will be just covered. But on all other days, we'll have an overabundance of energy. Now, the question is, what would you do with more energy than you need? What would you make? What would you build? Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.